And now it's Geico's Motorcycle Rules of the Road. Before you ride, make sure your mirrors are clean and adjusted properly. And if you're going on a group ride, make sure the lead biker knows where they're going. Uh, Ed, quick question. Where are you taking us? Oh, I have no idea. Well, am I the leader? <laughs> because I was uh, following that dude with the red helmet. Where, Where is he? And the rule to saving on motorcycle insurance is, in 15 minutes, Geico could save you 15% or more. Ignition sequence has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. You have entered Untold Radio AM. And now broadcasting from a secret location, your hosts, Joel Sturgis and Doug Hychek. And welcome to this edition of Untold Radio AM. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis. Right along with me, Mr. Doug Hychek, winded Doug Hychek. He almost sounded like he was going <laughs> to have a heart attack coming into studio. I don't know what's going on over there, but uh, I'm here and ready to broadcast. I just well, want to so throw that out there. I'm here too. Yeah. So okay, so I said. Here's the deal, three listeners. Three seconds. <laughs> here, here, here's the deal. Every single week, I show up in studio, half hour, forty five minutes early, cover material. Think about what I'm going to be asking our guest, which is really, really not that hard to do because they're so engaging to begin with. So there's so many questions to be asked because we only get the best guests. Like tonight, Preston Dennett. He's joining us again tonight. This will be his third appearance. By popular demand, great guy. Knows everything there is to know damn near about the paranormal. Written 27 books. Been around a long time. Not to mention he's also a MUFON investigator. That's our guest tonight, Bomb of the Hour. But getting back to what I was saying. Doug shows up. Three seconds. Three seconds. I wasn't late. Before the red buttons hit to go live. I wasn't late. <laughs> all that matters. That's I guess ultimately that is all that matters. That 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 is. Okay, so I forgot no. we had a power outage this morning. I didn't remember that all my computers would be off. So I get here and I'm like, oh, 20 seconds. 30 seconds. Do you, do you want to know why I give you such a hard time? Because I just get it no, in. No, 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 no. Because it goes all the way back to demerits. Hey. Do you remember demerits? Yeah, of course. You're getting <laughs> do, some. Do right you now. remember <laughs> that conversation of demerits? Yeah, you're getting demerits right now. Oh, <clears throat> I don't know. Such is life. No, but on a serious note, no, we're we're here and we're we're really excited to be talking to Preston tonight. And Doug, how the hell you been, man? Good. Good. I have a I have a new invention in mind. You do today. So well, alarm clocks have already been invented. So but go ahead. So anyhow, I was reading about this new invention this guy had called the Mulu. The what? Mulu. What is the Mulu? <clears throat> well, it's a toilet for cows. <laughs> you know, clearly, he might have invented a mulu. I didn't invent But he has yet to implement the training program. No, what? I, no, no. Okay, so they've they're they're starting to tr- toilet train cows. <clears throat> true, this is true. They found that they can take a cow and train them like a four year old kid. They give them a little sweets, a little reward if they stand over the mulu and urinate, right? Oh, so okay. today okay. I had the invention of the moo poo. <laughs> Do, are you just going to improve upon an already in uh, already existing invention? No, well, no. They're doing the mulu, which is for urine. I'll do the moo poo. 
or you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, I, I know. Okay, uh, it kind of begs the question on both of these inventions. Yeah. Why? Okay, do you know how many gallons of urine a cow puts out per day? Go ahead. Well, I'm sure it's quite a bit. Take a guess without cheating. Without cheating, I would say I'll give two. You, okay, stop. I'll two give, gallons. I'll give you how many? Let's say, well, my, my cow's pretty You're big. cheating. I, no, I'm not. I'm not arms. cheating. I swear to God, I'm not. My hands are not on. You I, can only see see the camera. One, I only see one hand. Okay, so I would say that a cow urinates eight gallons a day. Oh, my God. You so cheated. No, I did not. That is just me guessing. Oh, God. Okay. What, what is it? How yeah, much? Eight gallons. Oh, my God. I was right without even looking. Without, without even, even cheating. cheating. Look at that. Swear to God you didn't cheat. Swear to God. Oh, my God. Okay. Anyhow. But anyhow. So that's how my brain works. I hear Mulu. I come up with Moo Poo. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, doing your market research, how much does a cow poo in a day? A lot. <laughs> you know. I haven't worked out the details. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 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 Well, I'd hate to be part of that research team. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that would not be fun. But this conversation reminds me that. You know, Kim Jong-un, he lost a bunch of weight. Did you see pictures of him? No, I have not. He's skinny. Yeah? Was he fat before? I'm not saying. <laughs> Was he hefty beforehand? I, do you, you don't know the leader of North Korea? Oh, that little porker. Yeah, yeah, oh, yep. Anyhow. Yep, yeah. I didn't mean to offend anyone that might like the dude. But I mean, you're right. Like him? He, like him? he, he, he could was listen quite, to this. He could be. He looking, could. He could be a fan. He could. And you know what? I I apologize for for any derogatory statement I might have made towards Kim Jong Un. Yeah. Anyhow. In, in that. Um. So he's please a, don't kill me or he's poison lost me. a lot of weight. Anyhow, that's all. I just wanted to say that. Well, he probably went on the North Korean diet. Yeah, that's exactly it. You, you know the one. You know the yeah. starvation one. Yep. It's all the rage. Yep, and that is the the diet he probably took. <laughs> more, more than likely. More than likely, Doug. So uh, I'm just going through the important news. You are. The you Mubu, are. Kim Jong-un lost weight. The thylacine colorization, have you seen it? I, I have not. Oh, my God, it's amazing. They took that really? old footage from like the 30s. Black yeah. and white and real jerky, and they turned it into like modern, colorized footage. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, it's worth looking at because it's an extinct animal. Yeah. Tasmanian you know, tigers are gone. Well, although there are some, yeah, there's some interesting footage that, you know, I think could be real and they could be, uh, they could still be around kind of a Lazarus animal where they kind of come back to life. They go extinct and then poof. Yeah. Some, yeah. some animals that we thought were extinct, yeah, they're finding out are still around. Seal you know. camp, yep. Yep, yep. That, that was the most uh, notable one. And a few others here and there that they've found, like, oh, they still are rump, just not in great numbers. But I don't know if the silent scene... Is as rare as what we saw on our cameras the other day. I don't know. We yeah, saw that's... and recorded a completely silver deer. Silver, head to toe. Really? So you, see now I've heard of the albino white-tailed deer. Yep, albino. And I've even seen one, one time in my life, in the wild. And they have but I've piebald... never seen a, what's that? Have you ever seen a piebald deer? No. Piebald, that look it up. Seen. They're just, they're mottled, they're black, they're red, they're white. Mm -hmm. They have a shorter nose. And they're, you know, they're actually quite common. It's like one out of every 50 deer are piebald. Interesting. They look like, um, like a totally different kind of animal, actually. 
yeah. friend of mine sent me a camera trap photo and I looked at it and I said, oh, that's a piebald beer, deer. Cool. He's like, what's that? And I explained it to him. But sure. now this is something new. This deer is not piebald. It's silver. Completely just silver. Silver, yep. That is, that is cool. I, I have not seen and, a silver deer. No, it's silver. Like there's a red deer walking next to it, a normal deer, a white tail. And they're kind of red, you know, in the summer. This one is as silver as silver gets. Hmm. Really cool. That is really cool. Are you going to share the photos sometime? Yeah, I'll probably post it up on my Facebook page. Cool. And that'll, I have the, cool uh, the Tasmanian tiger footage up there, too. Wow. Very I should have cool. put it up on the radio page. You yep. should have. Yep. You, you should have. Because then I would have known about it. I didn't think about it. That's okay. That's I'm the okay. guy that comes in three seconds early. Right, right. Well, you are working on other product, you know, projects right. like the Pulu. Yes. And, you know, the Hurricane Ida that went through. Yep, yep. Apparently, it had one, just one benefit. It killed 100,000 or more rats. They got washed into the ocean and died. They're all over well, the that- beaches. Rats are all over the beaches. That, that that's kind of a stinky, stinky thing to happen, though, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. That is yeah did you see some is. of the footage for like the water shooting up into the subways and God, some scary stuff? Y- yeah, yeah, I did see that, and my heart goes out to everyone that's in the path yeah, of uh, that hurricane. It's horrible. So hopefully, you guys are all all right. If it touched you at all, and. Uh, you know, and and we know how devastating they can be, and they are, and so hopefully weather, it is all right. Weather events are scary because one moment you're in your home, everything's normal, yes. <clears throat> life is good. The next thing you know, it could be a flash flood or a tornado or a hurricane. It really could be. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, for there's us, scary it's... for all of us. I mean, we yeah, live, yeah. Could, I live in it, Tornado it, Alley. You don't. You do. No, I do not. I have enough trees around me. That's the biggest thing that, that breaks that up is our tall pines. But we do have some massive and horrendous snowstorms yes. that can be on, on the par with a big weather event. Right. Yeah. And our, our weather up here gets to be, what was the cold? Uh, we had 50 below zero at one yeah, point. That... So it's it can be dangerous anywhere. Weather, what? Mother Nature has fury no matter where you go. I'd rather have 50 blow weather than a tornado or a hurricane. Oh, or for storm. sure. 110%. 110%. 110%. Couldn't agree with you more. But then, then again, that's a lot of the reason why people live up here is because boring weather, you know, 99% of the time. So anyhow, so New York is now hundreds of thousands of rats down. So they, well, you know, they... Got washed into the estuaries, into the sewers, and dumped into the local bays. Could you imagine the cleanup? Oh, it's just nasty. You, you know, after this is all said and done, and and you know that that's that's really that's horrible Rats to aren't think nasty. about. I had a restaurant one time call me up <laughs> and said, "Get to our restaurant right now and bring a gun." And I'm like, "What?" They, they just called you up. Hey, by the way, we you got, own a gun bug. Like, Thousands of rats in the parking lot, and they're everywhere. So they they were talking about me bringing a pellet gun. Yeah. So, did you did you were you part of the management team of this restaurant? No, or? just a friend of mine managed it. I gotcha, gotcha. And of course, well, that is strange. I'm not going. No way. I'm not going. I don't. I don't want a rat running on my leg. Yeah, yeah. That that is true. You don't want that to happen. You you know that would be disgusting and horrible and. Would not be fun at all because they do bite. Then, let's see, later on, or, or like maybe two days ago, I saw this really cool video of these two tentacle like creatures in the sky, jet black, just freaky. Uh, yep. you, would tell, you would tell they were big, but then they were just squid kites. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're the Did kites, I already tell but... you this story? You did. You showed it to me last week. Yeah, oh the video. We, we already talked about it. So That's bad. Yeah, last week uh, we were um, <clears throat> looking at... Oh, by the way, 
Um, TikTok has overtaken YouTube as the number one video platform, Ooh. by the way. Yeah, I could believe that. I... That just happened this week, I guess. It is yep. now above above YouTube, which is well, not surprising because YouTube has been aging, of course. But um, it happened quicker than anyone is anticipating the takeover. But it's a different audience. I mean, TikTok videos are just, you know, quick, no attention span. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And, and But it has taken over for massive views over way over the YouTube. So YouTube is more of a long-form platform. I mean, you can actually put videos of substance on there, you know, hours long sometimes. Or TikTok is more, if, if you never use the TikTok app, it's more like quick two, three-minute videos, and that's about it. Just, just something very, very quick. Entertaining, <clears throat> but very quick. Not all of them. <laughs> no, no, they're, they're not all. They're, they're not all entertaining. So but, I, sent uh, my, I, I sent my daughter a Tic Tac video I wanted to share with her, right? She calls me up dying laughing. She's laughing. She's laughing at me, and I'm like, why are you laughing? She goes, you're on TikTok. That's so funny, Dad. You're on TikTok. She thought it was funny that I was. Yeah, how are you TikTok. on TikTok? Oh, oh, that you're on it, watching I'm it. Looking. Gotcha. I was gonna say, are you doing TikTok now, Doug? Are, are, are you doing some rap videos? Are you kidding? That that would be funny. I I, I would pay money. Yeah, I'd pay money too. <laughs> I, I would pay money to see you rap on TikTok. Yeah. I, I, would. I would. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I'll see, if I can, I'll see if I can beat my new record of three seconds by two. I'll do it two seconds next week. And if I get there just to two seconds and you have to do a rap video for TikTok. Oh, heck yeah, man. Do another one because I've done one before. So. Oh, I can only imagine. <laughs> Okay, so you've heard of EVPs, right? Oh, I, I have I ever. You can go to TikTok. You can find EVPs. And, yes. and by the way, that's what I like to do with TikTok. I'll just to see, because there's some pretty good stuff people have posted. I'll type in like, you know, hashtag UFO, and you'll get some cool, you know, UFO videos that probably never get posted to YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about, and they don't seem to be, at this point, anyway, from what I understand, right. my my brief using of the app is they don't seem to be oversaturated with ads yet. You don't no. sit through 10 ads first, get your video, and then sit through 10 more. Because now no. YouTube has decided to start putting ads at the end of the video you as know, well as I'm the front. Trying to get information to our listeners, telling them that they can actually just weed out all the crap. If they're interested in one topic, they can hit hashtag, you know, UFO yep. or hashtag kangaroos and just get those videos. And that's probably why it's so popular. But so anyhow, back to the EVPs. Okay. So tell tell our audience so they know what EVP is. And I'm going to tell you about a new one. Electronic voice phenomena. Correct. Now there is DTM. Do you know what DTM is? You know, that's a new one on me. What is DTM? I just because I made it up. Oh. But but it's happening. People are reporting reporting demon text messages. <laughs> so um yeah, demon text messages. Now you're you're gonna have to explain how how this would work. Uh, text from a just demon. Just a text message from a demon. Oh, well, how do we know it's a demon? Because it says I'm a demon. Hey, I'm a demon. By the way, here's your text. I mean, well, they're like threatening. They're, they're there's like Catholic uh, um, priests in like Washington D.C. have been getting them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about this stuff. <laughs> wow, demon texts. I yes. I am looking that up right now. Okay. I I I'm gonna look this up. Satanic me. text gener. There's one called you can actually download it right and text this to people called the Satanic text generator. Well, there you go. That's probably all it is then. 
Yep, yep. You can generate your own satanic text, send it to people you don't like. Yep, there you go. That was nice. I'm so glad that we got that information well, out there. You know, demonic texts. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the enemy can use technology, Exorcist says. Okay, I found what you were talking about right here. Yes. Let me get through that crap. Cheap Exorcist. Okay. He did not expect to get a text at all on his smartphone because he so rarely uses it. But when Father So and So with a really long Francisco Sequoia looked down at his iPhone, he realized that he had a text he was not expecting. A text, yes, from a demon. Wow. Yep. Hmm. <clears throat> Father Jose Francisco Sequoia is one of the lead exorcists in in uh, in in Spain and he was not expecting the devil to reach out via text. Right. And that was the one thing I forgot to tell you. They're happening during exorcisms. Interesting. That that is well, strange. I'm going to look into this further. So so your little, you know, your little app idea or whatever. Nobody would know to send a demon text message while you're doing a exorcism. No, no one would know. I believe the guy. I, I believe it's possible. Well, there's numbers Look at... of reports. I read numbers of reports. There was another one from, um, uh, let me finger, uh, Monsignor Stefan Rossetti of Washington, D.C. Well, he got one he got too, one. huh? Yeah, he got one too. I mean, does it end with your auto warranty is expired? Something like that. Anyhow. So I had another, you know, the moo, moo poo idea. Yeah. yeah. Then I had another idea. You know how when you're like driving your motorcycle or you got your window down in your car in the spring and all the the uh, the flowers, trees are flowered and you're getting sure. that warmth of spring yep. and yep. You're getting you know, all the good smell. Stuff. So I thought, what if they put that in like poured that oil and asphalt and every time you heat it up? That smell would just emanate off the tar. Would just everybody would be in a good mood. That'd be cool. Flowers all the time. Okay, so I look it up. A company already did it. You know, all, a lot of your good ideas have already been invented. It wasn't a good idea. It was the dumbest idea I've ever had. But my, I'll get ideas like this. Dun, 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 you know what I mean? And it was like they're dumb. Most of my ideas are stupid. Some are good, and I, you know, and I actually follow through with them and produce them. But so anyhow, so they invented it just so the asphalt workers wouldn't have to smell the stink. So they created a floral scented asphalt with a mixture of natural and synthetic oils that can neutralize huh. typical smell of asphalt. And well, I hate I can that see they where come that up with something nice. so absurd, like, or a name for a company that's so absurd. And you look it up and you go, it's taken. Yeah. It's like, yeah. how does that even happen? Right. No, I, I understand where you're coming from. I Collect, do. Collective consciousness, Joel. Exactly. You're just trying to fill a niche there. A need. Oh, my God. Right. Yvette's, uh, yeah. Yvette's brother, one time we were out to dinner, and Yvette's brother, oh, I had this great idea for this invention. It's this, like, teeth whitener paste you put on your teeth, and then you go in your in the tanning booth, and then it turns your teeth white. Then. <laughs> Yvette's sister's like typing it in, looking it up, and all of a sudden she goes, here, it's already been done. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. And he, yeah. You could just see the look on his face. Just Like went, that was his retirement idea right there. I'm going to invent yeah, this, exactly. become rich, and never have to work again, and it's already been done. Yep. So remember yeah. that. No matter how crazy of an idea you come up with, it's probably already been done. M more than likely. More, yes. more than likely, there's a lot of bad inventions and great. Now, isn't there a website you can go check the patent office? If you're really serious yes. about finding yeah. out, you can actually check and see Which if there's a patent. Patent search, yep. Yep, yep. And you can But not everybody sure. patents or inventions. The idea is if you do an invention, you don't want competition. You want to be mm -hmm. the first. In fact, in most cases... I would never even consider a patent. I don't recommend them for the average person because all it does is give you a license to sue somebody, which is going to cost you a million bucks, and you probably still won't sure. collect money. So yeah. patents, yeah, they're just not that great. Anyhow. It's, it's yeah. Oh, no, I was just, 
I was just gonna. I was getting into the the the, the weird news. Doug's weird news. This gotcha. is new. I, this I is stumbled Doug's into. Weird news. <laughs> while you're talking, I stumbled onto where are they now? Celebrities from the '90s and how they look. My God, some of these people have just like Fran Drescher doesn't look anything like the nanny anymore. No, don't. Surgery. It's, just, it's just amazing. I know, but anyhow, people are now reporting bears that are stealing their packages, their Amazon packages off their porch. So we now have bear porch pirates, black bear porch pirates. <laughs> oh, wow. Black bear populations, as you know, are exploding. Yes, they all, are. All over the country. They're coming, especially with this drought this year. They're all over the cities. I got bears yeah. in my neighborhood look like crazy right now. But so they're coming up like it's so you get a bunch of toilet paper delivered. It's floral scented. Yeah. Kind of like my my asphalt idea. Your ass your ass that's kinda of funny. T P and asphalt we go together. But the bear smells that. It's like, ooh, and he grabs the package and he's yeah. gone. Yeah. Yeah, well, I suppose, you know, that they, they're going to associate that smell with food source. Just, My point you know. is the animals will adapt to us getting so I'm many I'm sure food. they will. They always have. Right. I mean, we've well, we're been getting encroaching food. on them since the dawn of time. Right, but we're getting food deliveries now. That's something new. You know damn well the coyotes, fox, and the bears are going to all figure this out. And they'll literally start following Amazon trucks. There'll be packs of coyotes... It'd be like the dinner bell to show up or some food delivery truck and they'll just wait there and they'll just grab your food and run. It'll be a bad day to be one of the food dudes. Yeah. Or or DoorDash or, or any of that stuff. They're going to adapt to DoorDash. Yeah. The bears are going to think, Oh, here comes the DoorDash vehicle. I recognize it. (laughs) Time to eat. Out of the woods. And they're just going to take your, your tacos. (laughs) Man, that would suck. What a world we're living in. No one ever thought I mean, of that. They need to get a job. These bears need to get a job in the circus or something and start buying their own damn food. Something. Oh, my God. So I was going to also mention before I forget. Mm-hmm. Preston is going to be a few minutes late because this show kind of cuts into his commute time. Gotcha. And sometimes gotcha. traffic gets a little thick. Sure. Sure, not a and, problem there at all. Just so we know, so we may have to BS longer than normal. You're 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 talking about asphalt flowers and TP being raided by bears. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm listening here, and, and now I, I'm realizing that uh, yeah, yeah, that the world has truly gone crazy when now bears are okay. stocking Amazon trucks. I'm never I'm never short of stories. Okay. In Japan, I read a story like four days ago. You know, in Japan, you can't really own a firearm. They're hard to No, they're, so, they're really hard to come by. But people still rob stores. They still rob things. You know, they still have sure. crime. Guy tried to rob uh, a store with a Bic lighter. Well, He's, that can be dangerous, you know. Give me the money or I'm going to light you up, literally. I'm going to light you up, literally. Wow. Oh my God, people Bic have lighter. Used, they have used nail clippers, <laughs> fingernail clippers, to rob stores. Well, that that is insane. Nose that, hair that, cli- There's actually been people that have robbed stores with nose hair clippers. Uh, I, I, I would not feel necessarily... In fear for my life, if somebody came up with nose hair clippers. Kitchen knives? Well, see, the kitchen knives would work, but could you imagine somebody trying to rob you with a nose hair clippers? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be that all that afraid. How about you? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be afraid. You, you know, you, you'd probably uh, thank sh- them for thinking of you. I'd just grab it and shove it up his nose. Just his nose? Yep. <laughs> I was <laughs> nice. I thought I had, and I thought if I say the other thing, it's not going to sound good. I hear you. I, I hear you. Well, you know, you are. Okay. Now, we're big toy fans. You're a big toy fan when you're a kid. I mean, you appreciate oh, toys. Time. 
And I've been sitting here listening and waiting for my spot to maybe interject some real news into the world here for a second in the <laughs> show. Hey, you don't like the 2021 uh, Toy Hall of Fame has announced its inductees, by the way, this year. And some of them are, are interesting. It makes you wonder why that wasn't already in there. And now you're going to tell me, Doug, if you've heard of these toys. Some of them you have heard of. Others you definitely may not have. And if you have not heard about them, I will fill you in. American so Dolls. Are these old toys? No, are these not- are just the toys okay. that were inducted in 2021 okay. to the Toy Hall old. of Fame. They could <laughs> so- be old. And they could be new. And they could be all, all over the place. So here are the toys that were inducted for 2021. Okay. American Girl Dolls. Have you ever heard of the American Girl? No. It's a line of Barbie doll-ish for, okay. for basically the, the uh, I guess it really would have been the Y generation it took off with. It's uh, right after the Millennials, the American Doll is a fairly new thing, but that Next. made it into the to- Toy Hall of Fame. Good. Now, I Next. know you've heard of this one, and you've probably thrown one at a few people, Battleship. Oh, I've played Battleship. Right? And you probably threw one at your brother <clears throat> after he sunk your Battleship across no. the room. No? no. I had an electronic Battleship. Oh, you did? Oh, you were one of those kids. Yeah. You had parents that you had parents that loved you. Yeah. I was stuck with the old school no, I one. Probably, I probably bought it um, for one of my kids. Sure. Sure. Now, but here's one cool. that... Here's the one that I thought for sure would have been in there like a hundred years ago. Billiards. Yeah, of course. It's like cool. they just billiards. got around. They just now made it in. <clears throat> billiards. Weird. Next one, Cabbage Patch Kids. You remember Cabbage Patch Kids. Yeah, stupid. Do you, do you remember the big uh, Cabbage Patch Kids mania of the 80s? Yep. Sure. Gotta get those Cabbage Patch kids. <clears throat> Parents were killing each other over them. Seriously, they were. There was a few murders associated with them even back in those days. Yeah, it's crazy. Which, which was sad. Which was sad. Fisher Price. Of course, that's it. Uh, corn Popper. I'm not sure why a Corn Popper is in there, but that made it in there. Apparently a toy. I guess so. My Jean. That made it in there. That's a Have you ever corn? played that game? What is it's like a isn't that Japanese something? Yeah, like it's it's, it's like a card yeah game. it's well I think it's a card game and it's a tile game is what it is and you do something or other because they I tried they, they use that they have games like that in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, they do have a mahjong gambling edition. Yeah, in Vegas, you're right. Masters of the Universe made it in. You the Encore, I think the Encore put one in. The Encore Hotel, which is connected to the Wynn Hotel? They might have. Farmers. They always look before they leap. And with more tank mix options, neighbor-friendly weed control, and much more, farmers have looked and leapt for the superior technology of Enlist herbicides. And these advantages begin when you plant Enlist E3 soybeans. Discover a better seed and herbicide system at Enlist.com. You looked. Now leave. It's clear to you that de-icing the wings will not be done in a jiffy. You look for phone outlets but see none. Only photos of phone outlets. A voice announces your gate is now 39C-12B-9A. It's like musical chairs if musical chairs made you sob in the pet relief area. A child picking his nose stares. His parents have abandoned him. The airport will raise him now. Don't let flight delays ruin your vacation. Go on a real vacation. Go RVing. And uh, beautiful hotel, by the way. I recommend it. Um, I've never been to that one. I've never been to that one. I should make it a point to get there. Now, you're going over there in December anyway. Yes. So you have to check I'll it be out. speaking at the MGM. And the, yeah. Just, if that goes off without a hitch, you will be there. Are you going, are you going to that? I don't know yet. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. If you start you know. walking now, you could be there by. Well, no, I got some other engagements too, and some other offers around that same time. So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, all that goes. Have, you, you've been to Vegas. I have been to Vegas. It's weird though. Some people have been to Vegas like billions of times. Other people have only gone once. Some people. I think I've gone 
I've, or 12 over the years. But I've met numerous adults that have never been there. Really? Um, I mean, if you've never been to Las Vegas, you at least got to go once. Because pe- if nothing else, the people watching is great. Um, I like Vegas. I've been there lots and lots. Yeah. I lived there for a while. Yeah? Yep. Did, did you enjoy it? Um, yeah, it was. I mean, it wasn't long. It probably maybe took three days. I had local friends already and, you know, people to hang out with. And Yeah, no, it was cool. I had fun. First guy, first guy I met was Bruce Willis's stuntman double, Ian. Okay. He looked like Bruce Willis, talked like him, and acted like him. No, he wasn't his, I shouldn't say stuntman double. He was his stand-in double. He did a lot of stuff. He was the Bruce from 30 feet away, is what you're saying. No, he was like the Bruce from one foot away. <laughs> so ah, he, gotcha. He would allow them to get the lighting right and the makeup right and, you know, and just get everything set so when Bruce could walk into a, you know, a, a set, yep. everything yep. was ready so he didn't I have need to need a double. Side. But Ian, I started hanging out with Ian, and it was freaky because... Not only did he act like Bruce Willis, I mean, he sounded like him, he looked like him, but he wasn't trying to be like him. So it was almost like a twin. He was like his twin, so it was like hanging out with Bruce Willis. He was just as cool, too. Really? Well, good to hear. Good to hear. Anyhow, yeah, it's just one yeah. of my friends down in Vegas. <laughs> well, that is old. That is cool. Hey, um... Huh. Interesting. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, Masters of the Universe is on the list. You know who that is, right? No. No idea. He-Man, by the power of Grayskull, I have the power. Yeah, okay. Or the yeah. cartoon. It's a cartoon, right? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. They had action figures to go with them. Not dolls, but action figures. I never watched it, but go ahead. If you call them dolls in the collector world, they will beat you with an inch of your life. They're action figures. The nerds get a little freaky about that. So I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, one <clears throat> pinata, pinata is on here. That made it on there. Pinatas. So just the pinata. Yeah. They just said, yeah. Let's just put that on the list. Yeah. Risk. The board game Risk yeah. made it. Yeah. Never played it. Here is one that I couldn't quite understand why it wasn't there before and why it had to be there. Sand. Just sand. Sand. Dirt. Sand. Yeah, but they no. There's some kind of a craft game which you. Take colored sand and put it in vases, and you layer it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still sand, right? Yeah, it's sand. I mean, it's, it's still sand. You know, Settlers of Catan, whatever that is. No idea. And then t- toy fire engine. That rounds just, out your twelve just, I, fun just, lists. Just a toy fire engine. No brand. That's it. No just brand. Just toy fire engine. It sounds like they need a new board of directors. It, it sounds like something needs to happen. Yeah. So, some shakeup needs to happen in the toy world. Where's Whammo Airgun? <laughs> well, Whammo Airgun, uh, was, that was kind of dangerous, though, so I'm not sure if I ever made the cut, the Whammo. They were awesome. Well, was that the one where you could uh, shoot things at high velocity yeah, they had the projectiles? Yeah, big rubber diaphragm, you'd cock it yeah, back. That's what it was, yeah. Yep. Shoot it at somebody would blow. I mean, you could actually feel like a ball of air hit you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then, kids like me discovered you could put things, projectiles, in there. So you would retrofit this with different kind of ammunition. Because when I was a kid, they didn't have the guard, the projectile guard on them on the front. They were just wide yeah. open. You could drop it, pencil in there, ballpoint. Oh my gosh, it could become a real weapon. Oh. Real darts, we would put it, you know, with the sharp points. What do you mean? So you're the reason, not you specifically, but your generation was the reason why it got changed completely and had guards on it at this yes. point. Yes, we were the... And, and things like that. My generation was were the toy testers. We tried to kill each other with our toys. Well, lawn darts was pretty successful. Yeah. You know. Talked about, yep. 
But, you know, we had things that heated up and squished. and I mean, they'd, they'd sell a hydraulic to- a press for a toy. I mean, just the craziest crap. Oh, my gosh. Just name and I'm kill. surprised you survived. Chemicals, acid. I mean, yeah. Could, uranium. Oh my, yeah, you could buy uranium for a kid for a toy. <laughs> With a Geiger counter. Oh, my God. Hey, kids. You know. <laughs> Here's a little uranium. Shove it in your pocket. Cigarette, fake cigarettes. I mean, things like that. Oh, yeah. Candy cigarettes were the best. No, they had fake cigarettes that had like a little battery in them, and they would actually produce smoke. Kind of like the early form of vaping. Sort of. I don't know. But they had, they had the worst crap when I grew up. But it was fun. So you'd, yeah. you'd get a cereal box, right? There would be a toy in there. Everything had a spring in it. Man, if it didn't have a spring in it, <laughs> that wasn't a cool toy. You had to have a spring. that You could, sh- you know, shoot things. So I remember there was, for years, they would give away little spring guns and spring rockets and, you know, sure. in the cereal. Sure. Could you, you imagine? Your eye out. You could take <clears throat> your eye out before breakfast. Doug, could you imagine opening a business? Right, and winning the lottery on the same day. Uh, I've actually, one of our guests actually had that happen to him. Really? One of our man opens new business, wins a million dollar jackpot lottery on the same day he opens his own business. Yeah. So, our guest was Ken Walker. And he He won the lotto. Yeah, he won... It was a bank lotto that he hadn't even joined. It was his um, uh, bank cooperative. And they just literally just surprised him. He had just, you know, he'd gone through a divorce, just barely gotten on his feet, opened up his new shop. Bam. They walked up and with a million dollar check for him. No way. Yep. Wow. This so does it happen. Could, it does that happen. That is cool. And so um, couldn't happen to a better guy. Yeah, a Florida man who opened his own auto shop receiving an unexpected cash injection injection on the first day of business when he won a million dollar lottery jackpot. Brian Woodle, 46 of Florida, won the Florida lottery. Yeah. He bought his five dollar Gold Rush Supreme scratch ticket from a Circle K store, and he won the money. And he loves working on vehicles. It's always been my dream to own my own repair shop, he says. But then the, our first day, I stopped by Circle K just on a whim to buy a lot winning lottery ticket. Huh. He won a $1 million prize, but he did choose the lump, one lump sum of $880,000. Did you know that Circle K store received $2,000 bonus commission for selling a winning lottery ticket? I didn't know they got t- uh, bonuses. I, I didn't know that either. I have heard, I have heard that, but I didn't know if it's true or not that they would get bonuses for selling big tickets. But evidently, they do. Do you buy lottery tickets? Yeah. Huh. You know, do you buy me one every time you go? Would Would I buy one for you? Sure, I would only. For no, do you? Winnings. Do I buy you a lottery? Yeah, and ticket? then you just tell me about the loser ones. You don't tell me about the winner. <laughs> That's a great idea. Hey, where you are, not too far from where you are, there's there's some problems, man. Minnesota farmers' hemp maize aims to educate about crop. Minnesota farmer is uh, foregoing the corn this year and inviting visitors to take a walk in his two-acre two hemp maze. Wouldn't that rub off on you? I would think so. Ted Galley. Owner and operator of the Hemp Maze in Minnesota at, at its Willows Keep <clears throat> Farm. I don't know if you're familiar with that is. Situated just south of Zimbroda. Now, where is Zimbroda? Southern Minnesota. So it should group. be south of you then. It's nowhere near you. It's probably. south. Yeah, it's south about 100 miles. Said he wants to use the maze to educate the public about the industrial uses of hemp. But I'm confused. How did he get a license to grow hemp? Oh, because hemp is not marijuana, he says. Oh. Marijuana is its cousin. Hemp is not marijuana. Oh, I thought I thought it was one and the same. I always did, too, until it's brought it up in the article. Industrial hemp, hemp is usually grown 
for its food and, and its fiber. And it's also grown to make medical th uh, apparatuses and to make some of the strongest rope ever devised by mankind. Mm. But anyhow, gr what's greater is he's partnering with the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Well, there you go. So as far as I know, he says, I'm the only hemp maze in Minnesota and probably in the United States. Yep, I don't like those corn mazes. No, no, you're, you're ever since I saw The Shining, I'm good. I know it wasn't a corn maze, but it's still a maze. I'm good. I can't get out of them. No? I go in, no. but that's the end of it. You go in, and, and how do they extract you by air? It just takes time. <laughs> you, you wouldn't go in a corn maze I've done now? I've two of them now, and I don't. You've done two of them. But the, my kids are grown up now. I don't ever have to do a corn maze. Yeah. yeah. Did, did it ever make? Did it ever panic you? Well, you get a little claustrophobia. You think about it, and you think, I may never get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. That that is true. I mean, there's nothing to know where you're going. Well, that that, that none. You're right. You Everything are looks right. the same. You don't yeah. know if you're in the middle or if you're right by the exit. That that is true. That is true. See now, I remember the scene in The Shining, when of course Jack Nicholson's chasing Danny Torrance and that whole maze, and that's all you need to do is see that movie, and I had enough of that. No mazes for me. Yeah. So you've never been in a corn maze. Fast forward to my twenties. I did a corn maze. I did it with a young lady that I I I. I liked and uh, it did not end well we couldn't get well she got out of the maze I, I we lost each other somehow and she got out of the maze and took off with another guy and I was still stuck in the maze mm. so after that no, no, see no good comes to mazes no that reminds me that reminds me one time I parked my car at Disneyland <clears throat> it was a rental car but I never looked at the rental car Never even looked at it. I didn't even know what color it was. Wow. And I parked it. Took the fam to Disneyland. Yeah. Time yeah. to leave. You need a work schedule that fits your life. And Amazon has shifts that help you make the best use of your time. Whether you're a night owl, early bird, weekend warrior, or somewhere in between, discover the benefits of thinking outside the 9 to 5. You decide whether to seize the day or the night so you can get back to what matters most. Go to Amazon.com slash shifts to learn more. That's Amazon.com slash S-H-I-F-T-S. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. The powerful new iPhone 13 Pro is here, and T-Mobile is the place to get it. This new cinematic mode turned my travel videos into a filmmaking masterpiece. Get iPhone 13 Pro on us right now with eligible trade-in and plan, and upgrade forever. Lock in the trade-in value of your new iPhone up to 800 bucks every two years for your next upgrade, only at T-Mobile. With Max Plan and on us, now via 30 monthly bill credits. For well-qualified buyers plus tax, contact us before canceling service to continue credits on current device or credit stop and balance on required finance agreement is due. See T-Mobile.com. And man, yeah. did I feel like the dumbest man on the world. Well, <laughs> I got a story. I was at a much smaller parking lot recently um, in Duluth, Minnesota, which is only about 100,000 people, at the mall there, and couldn't find my vehicle right away. So, of course, you feel like a moron wandering around looking for your vehicle. So you parked in the mall? Is that the mall up the hill? Yeah, it's the oh, big mall, yeah, yeah. Miller, Miller Hill. Miller, Miller Hill, Hill, yep. And so you parked there, shopping. you didn't pay any attention to where... I, I didn't really pay, I, I thought I did because you parked right outside of Barnes & Noble. But you're and a I'm like, okay. That's a piker deal. Park at Disneyland and not even know what your car looks like. That's well, the you, color. You had an excuse because you had a rental car, I'm sure, that you're not used to. I got and this is the car I drive every day, Doug, and I could not find it. But I remember getting all warm thinking, man, I really screwed up. Man, you know how you get warm? Now. You know how your body heats up when you're like, you know you're screwed? <laughs> yes, I do know that feeling. Like that, yeah, this is it. 
I know this feeling. I am so dead. Yeah. I am a dead man walking, especially if the wife is with you and she's getting uncomfortable. You know the well, end is near. How about having two little kids that are exhausted with you? Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. We kind of had that because we were school shopping. We were coming out. After walking all over this mall, and they're tired, they're already whining, they're already complaining, you know, about, you know, things and, and you know, just being little kids, you know how they are. And, and looking for this car, and I'm hitting the panic button on the remote, and, and nothing's going off. I'm like, hell, because I thought for sure he Joe, that that's cheating. Button. I didn't. Back I realized it's cheating, that. and I was going to use that to my advantage, but it did not work out that way. There was no such thing back when I was... And lost Were you like the Griswolds? It was like the Wall 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 World. World. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what I, I said? I go, when a vacation starts out bad, usually means a good ending. Normally, normally. Was there a good ending? Yeah, oh sure. It was a, I mean, it was a great trip other than that debacle, yeah. which was yeah. in the debacle category. Yeah, that's pretty low. Yeah. So I had to rent a new car. So you just left it wherever it was? I just called, called up the rental company and been like, hey, I can't find this car anywhere. Nope. I just said it's so, over at Disneyland. I have no and the car. rental car, had the company had to come and find the car. Yeah, Disney World, excuse me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's not my problem. Well, no, that's why you... Oh, you know, the yeah. meanest thing I ever did one time, I was in Vegas. We were really late. Like, we were just kind of like, you know, I skidded in tonight. Skidded yeah. the airport. Yeah. And I just remember tossing my car keys to the rental car company because I didn't even know where I parked it because I had to park somewhere far away. I didn't even tell them where I was. Yeah, just here's the key. Tossed them the keys and didn't even say hello or nothing. Yeah. So yeah. You know, the only time I had, I'm sure they found it eventually. Eventually, I'm sure. I'm sure they had the lowest man of totem pole walking up and down the God, the no. aisles looking for that car. You know. So mean, but what are you gonna do? I had to Was it winter time on top of it, or was it nice? No, this time? was in Vegas. I was leaving. Oh, it was in Vegas. Gotcha. In Vegas. As you're leaving. Yeah, I'm leaving Vegas. All, yeah, they're used to. I'm sure that they're used to that over there. Yep. You know, probably. so it was probably just another day to them. But I understand where you're coming from. You still think about it. So. I made my flight barely seconds. Barely, barely made it. Hey, would you buy? Elvis's hair for the chance. No, I don't. Don't tell that story. I, <clears throat> I'm aware of that story. It's You're gross. aware of the baseball-sized clump of hair that came from Elvis's head. That's sick. That sold for say two thousand dollars at auction. You're that's aware of that? Sick. Yeah, it's still sick. Yeah, I, I, I find that strange that someone Anyhow, would want to buy that. Let's go to commercial and see if we can get uh, Preston. He should be around. All right, we're gonna run a commercial. God willing, Preston be with us when we come back next. Go to, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, Tom Bodette. If you can hear me, then you have an internet connection, which means you can do cool things online, like listen to streaming radio, obviously, or watch a video of a monkey washing a cat. Let your freak flag fly. Or you can book a room at a great price at motel6.com. Isn't the internet wonderful? Everything you want right at your fingertips, and whoa, did not need to see that. <clears throat> I'm Tom Bodette from Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by FeedThePig.org. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. I can't believe it. I can't believe it either. I paid more than the minimum each month, and soon enough, it was gone. So you're just giving up? Giving up on what? The life of luxury. Egyptian cotton, caviar Thursdays, designer everything. What are you talking about? Our plan. What happened to winning the lottery and mastering the art of the perfect mimosa? Hosting galas, wearing enough jewelry to require a bodyguard, vacationing in the French Riviera, and then buying it. I just thought maybe it was time to prepare for my future. You know, set some financial goals. Make some smart investments. Open a 401k. Financial goals? Investments? A 401k? You are horrifying. 
crying right now. Listen, if winning the lottery were easy, everyone would do it. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Northern Tool and Equipment. So me and the boys head out to tailgate today and find some other fans in our spot. Well, it happens. Yeah, cheering for the wrong team. Oh, this is war. Even worse, they've got this couch set up and everything. A couch? Yeah, it's a uh, sectional. All right, first thing, don't ever use the word sectional again. Done. Second, I want you to grab a 4,700-pound tow chain with J-hook and grab hammer. Throw that on the back of your truck. Got it. Now you're going to hail Mary the J-hook over the end of that couch. Time to find a better spot for your new friends. That should do it. There's no problem. A little horsepower can't solve. Northern Tool and Equipment. Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the Wacky Waterfall? That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope, it's the Wacky Waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Balling street? Growing street! <gasps> It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the Rex. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Untold Radio AM. I'm your host, Joel Sturz. Right along with me is Mr. Doug Hycheck. Tonight we have Preston Dennett on the show. Preston has been on before. It's always been a great time having him on. And Preston has uh, began his investigative career with UFOs and the Paranormal in 1986 when he discovered that his family, friends, and co-workers were having dramatic, unexplained encounters. Since then, he has interviewed hundreds of witnesses and investigated a wide range and very varying of paranormal phenomena he is a field investigator with mufon a ghost hunter paranormal researcher and an author of 27 books and more than 100 articles about ufos and the paranormal wow he can be found in numerous publications including fate magazine alignus rising mufon ufo journal nexus paranormal magazine and the list goes on without any further ado preston dennett Hi guys, thanks for having me on. Yeah, what's new with you, Preston? Oh, I'm keeping busy. You know it. Always working oh, on yeah. cases, another book. Uh, yeah, this what? this field is full of action right now. So yeah, so, really. What, what, what's your new book called? Uh, my new book is called Wondrous: Twenty Five True UFO Encounters. Pretty excited about this one. It's all my own cases uh, with. A wide variety of reports, actually. Some landings, really interesting USO report, some interesting sightings with telepathic contact, abductions, of course, onboard experiences. I'm really excited I got to include a few whistleblower accounts that I've been Ooh. sitting on for a while, yeah. How did you come up with the name Wondrous? Such a cool name. Well, thanks. It took a lot of thought, actually. <laughs> there's, you know, There's a lot of titles out there. And uh, want to come up with a good one. If it's too long, you know, people don't remember it. Yeah. Um, actually, when I was going through the accounts, and pretty much all of them described a real sense of wonder. And that's what got me thinking. Mm. Like, would you say that most of these in the book are positive interactions, or there's some scary ones in there, too? Oh, yeah. There's the whole gamut. I would say yeah. most mostly positive but definitely there's usually one or two where people felt pretty traumatized by it mm -hmm. and uh, weren't super happy especially in the beginning ufo contact can start out pretty scary yeah uh, generally speaking if a person you know works through it gets over their fear 
uh, their encounters become a lot more benevolent. I don't think this is a nefarious phenomenon, generally speaking. Uh, but yeah, okay. yeah, there are it some kind of starts cases. off, kind of starts off with a bang, if you will, and then then it wants to get used to the phenomenon or come to grips with it. It seems to get more manageable for them as far as when it's happening, the trauma. Exactly. Yeah, which I understand. I mean, it's a probably very <laughs> scary to see you know, a gray or you know, a praying mantis or something in your home at night, yeah. you know, pulling you out of bed. Uh, I can see why people would be completely freaked out. Yeah, I don't think I'd like that either. No, but then they heal you <laughs> or, you know, they give you warnings and show yeah. you the engine yeah. room. And, you know, it's not so bad, actually. You kind of find out they're not bad people or bad entities. They're just doing what they're doing, and they, they have no interest in hurting you. And, uh, in fact, maybe uh, completely on the other hand, they, they're here to help you. And so that must ease, of course, the terror. Is it, has anyone ever said they look forward to their encounters now? Do you know that like, they, they look forward to being abducted? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't like that word, by the way. <laughs> oh, Because <laughs> yeah. uh, for them, you know, it's... They look upon these ETs as friends or even family. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Currently working with a lady in Florida. Who, she's going to be the subject of my next book. And she's a fully conscious contactee. There are a lot of people who have these experiences and it gets buried in amnesia. I think partly because of the human mind's tendency to bury traumatic events. And partially because the ETs are... I don't want to say erasing, but suppressing a person's memory, uh, to, I think, to ease the whole trauma. But she, yeah, she's fully conscious and she looks forward to it. Absolutely. Why, why do you think that some people have these memories completely erased and others don't? Do you think it's based on the person or do you think it's something the aliens are doing to them that they say, oh, this person can handle it? Yeah, I think it's probably the latter in most cases, uh, because what happens is a person is taken on board and they're physically examined. This is the most common thing. I'd say that most people who are, not, who are taken on board will experience this. And it can be very traumatic, especially you know in the beginning, as I mentioned, when a person often has a very strong fear reaction and they become combative. Uh, and I think the ETs at this point don't want to leave a person with all this fear and dread of their experience. And so we'll suppress it. But if a person is very calm, their chances of remembering it are far higher, far greater. Gotcha, gotcha. So I've just always wondered why some people can remember, you know, from day one, and then others, they may not discover it till 30 years later. Yeah. There was one case, I have to say, I mean, more than one, I should, I should say, where the ET said flat out, it's not us doing it, it's you. You guys are suppressing it yourself. Mm -hmm. I am not so sure that's true generally, because I know of many cases where the ETs will say, you won't remember this. You will not remember this. Don't remember it. You'll remember it when the time is right. Do you think they're doing the memory erasing similar to, you know, with some kind of a drug like fentanyl? Or do you think they're doing some other kind of mind trick? Uh, I think it's largely hypnotic suggestion, this type of thing. But absolutely, I think, yeah, rohypnol. Ro <laughs> um, there is a case in England that comes to mind where a whole family was taken on board. And they were all given this sort of milky drink. Uh, which they were told would help them to forget. And they didn't give it to the smallest child, who was like four years old. And uh, after following the experience, they had missing time. And she's like, we were all on board a spaceship, don't you remember? And they did not. Um, so I think, and there's other cases that sort of speak to that. Yeah, I think in some cases uh, they do use what we would consider drug techniques. But generally, no, it's mm -hmm. hypnotic. Have you, I think about how cruel that. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I was, I was just going to ask because you know I've read accounts where people claim that they were touched with some kind of a wand or an electronic device, and maybe that was used to you know paralyze them and erase their memory. 
Yeah, that is very common, this wand-like device. It's kind of, well, smaller than a flashlight, about the same length as a flashlight. It has a light on the end and can be used for a number of purposes. Apparently, it paralyzes a person, can render you unconscious. Some of these instruments are apparently being used to sort of uh, examine a person, like a the Star Trek tricorder type of deal. Uh, so maybe it has different buttons <laughs> that have different uses, uh, but it's absolutely a very common instrument that the ETs use. I'd love to get my hands on one of those. So uh, have you investigated cases where there's been kind of standout aliens that don't match any other description where this is, the you know, the first time you've ever heard of that kind of description? Or do they all seem to, you know, fit into one of four categories? Uh, there are absolutely standout cases, and it's very frustrating. So here we have a, this, I'm thoroughly often, consistently, I should say, contacted by people who have a completely unique looking ET encounter. Most are greys, over 50% easily. Probably, yeah, maybe even all the way up to 70% would be a, your standard grey. You know that we know so well the big eyes and large head and short uh, pale skin uh, but these can vary as well so you have really short three foot emotionless almost ai type grays artificial intelligence or androids whereas we have slightly taller willowy grays four to five feet and upwards to six feet but after that there's praying mantis that's fairly common human looking and the fourth category is sort of a catch-all, which I call strange humanoids. And these are ones that are often unique, not always. There's blue beings, which are fairly commonly reported, short, stocky, dwarf-like beings. But yeah, one gentleman in this latest book, uh, he had a, described beings I've never heard of before or since. He's, he described them as being almost 10 feet tall. And he said, you know, they could have been nine feet tall, but I'm six and a half, you know, he's six feet four inches. And uh, he had to, he says, they were a good three or four feet taller than him. Jeez. Human. But after nine feet, who's calling you, right? <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, he met them on a beach, on Wasaga Beach in Canada during a walk late at night. And he had been doing CE5 work, calling down UFOs with lights and meditation. So that may have been a factor here, but he did end up having missing time, saw these guys right in front of him. And he said that they were wearing black, sort of shiny jumpsuits with very high collars, enormous eyes, enormous sort of almond shaped eyes, uh, but not dark. They had sort of gold and blue lined irises, you know, very thick, skin with, covered with wrinkles they looked really old he said and not attractive not the least bit good looking uh jagged yellowy teeth very large forehead very large chin large nose human-ish but certainly not human and uh, spoke with loud gravelly voices not to be dramatic, but I'm obsessed with how much I just saved at Kohl's. I got 25% off Nike clothes for the kids, the cutest $39.99 flex hoodie for me, and got great Columbia gear for all our outdoor adventures. Did I mention the extra 20% off and the Kohl's cash I got? So yeah, not sure what I love more, fall deals or fall weather. Select styles, 20% offer ends October 3rd. Some exclusions apply. See store or kohls.com for details. So, very unusual. I haven't heard a case like that before or since. Do you, you think we're being visited by how many different species? I mean, what would be your guess? For all the years you've been doing this, Preston, what would be your guess if you had to, you know, pick how many different species have visited Earth and made reports, you know, where people have seen them, how many? Um, it is easily in the hundreds. Probably closer to the thousands. There are regulars, you know, the three or four or five regulars <laughs> that seem to be around quite a bit. 
grays really dominate, uh, mm -hmm. particularly here in the U.S., uh, but that's not so necessarily true in, like, South America. They have a lot more what I would call short beings, uh, sometimes hairy, uh, whereas, you know, Europe has a lot of human-looking type ETs. But, yeah, these, these unique ones are really baffling because they're it's one after another after another. And if you survey the UFO literature, I've certainly got a lot of cases myself. These are beings we don't see before or since. Have we ever seen the Kelvin Parker case creature? Because that was certainly one of the most credible cases where you've got, you know, two witnesses, same story. The creatures look like turnips damn near, you know, like really weird. Have those creatures ever been reported again? No, nope, not as far as I know. Yeah, that is a great case. Uh, yeah. Very well authenticated. There were outside witnesses, by the way, who saw the UFO. And uh, they, these two gentlemen were left alone in the police station. And the police secretly recorded them, yeah. you know, hoping to catch them trip up. But they sure didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very well authenticated case. And yeah. Yeah. Another that good example. That this, that's the one that happened in the 70s, right, in Mississippi? That's right, Pascagoula. Okay. Yep, Pascagoula, yeah. Yeah, and it was just the way that they described um, the beans sticking their fingers down their throats. And just, you know, th everything was just kind of a one-off. And I just wondered if, to this day, anybody else had it said, hey, that same exact thing happened to us, same creatures. It's like they came here, did what they needed to do, and left and never came back. Yeah, you know, I, even among greys, I am looking for cases of like, that's the exact same ET. Some people do get names from these guys. Mm -hmm. I've heard a bunch of them. Betty Andreessen, her grey said his name was Quasga. Uh, I know of a case in Texas where the female grey said her name was Nelda. Um, and there's others, Quailar, Quai, I've heard many of them. Mm -hmm. I'm still, yeah, I'm waiting for like, one case to say, oh, that's the same ET. <laughs> no, I can yeah, tell because. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I met you before. Oh, you bet. Uh, <laughs> we'd, have yeah, to get a, we'd have to get a last name. <laughs> yeah, this time, yeah. So, yeah. Are there any uh, of them that mirror us? That look just like us, same manner, same everything? Any, yeah. any ETs that look just, uh, that yeah. are, are us, essentially? Yeah, strikingly human. I would say there are subtle differences because. People report what we used to call Nordics. I think that term is falling out of favor because it sort of implies, you know, white skin, blonde hair, and blue eyes, and that's just not the case. These human-looking ETs, that's the term I prefer, uh, come in all different colors like we do. And uh, they look just like us, except they're usually described as being very muscular, quite tall, six feet, not always. Five feet turns up in some cases. Uh, but almost genetically perfect. Just really beautiful. And another weird detail is when there's more than one of them, they're often described as looking almost like twins or very closely related like brothers. Uh, but often, yeah, virtually wow. identical. Yeah, yeah. Those are the ones I wouldn't mind meeting because the, the, the culture shock wouldn't be so... So heavy that way. I don't know if I really want to pray mantis showing up and want to hang out. Can can you, yeah? Can you describe the praying mantis types? Because that's so confusing. Because we I've, almost everybody knows what a praying mantis looks like. You know, with the huge eyes and the the arms that kind of come up like hooks. But what yeah. are you describing, Preston? Yeah, that that fascinates me because you know why why is that praying mantis bug, you know, why not giant potato bugs or ladybugs or, I mean, there's so many insects. Yeah. Uh, but praying mantis is what we're kind of stuck with. This is what people are seeing. In fact, in this latest book, one lady contacted me because she was looking for another report that was similar to hers. Generally speaking, these praying mantis are about eight to nine feet tall, very large eyes, very stick-like limbs. Uh, pale gray, pale green. Uh, but this lady 
uh, who is a teacher actually, was jogging outside her home in O'Fallon, Illinois. This is in 2006. This is a rural community. And she likes to go jogging early, early morning, 4.30 a.m. Uh, so she's out there jogging with her dog and comes goes down a few roads and comes upon this T-section at Kyle Road and sees what she looks like a man on stilts walking down the center of this road. It's a fairly busy road during the day, but it's abandoned at night. And of course, it's dark. And she's thinking, you know, a man on stilts, this is crazy. Her dog saw it yeah. first, actually. And uh, so this figure walks under the streetlight. And that's when she realized this thing was 15 feet tall. because She could measure it by the streetlight. And I do have another account involving a 15 foot tall praying mantis, which is actually why she ended up contacting me. Jeez, that'd be this... pretty intimidating. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I would react. I was kind of surprised how she reacted. She sees this thing go under the streetlight. She can see it perfectly. It's got sort of a triangular shaped head, eyes the size of basketballs. It's taking six to 10 foot strides, just booking it down the road. And it's, she said its head, head was pointed down and it was scanning the road as if looking for something, and sort of pumping its arms up and down as it's walking. And uh, as it goes by, she runs after it. <laughs> I don't know how I would react. I think I probably would freeze, maybe turn around and run the other way. Uh, I don't know. But uh, she took after it, took off after it, and uh, ran up to the T intersection and saw it disappearing into the darkness and sort of turning into the cornfield there. Ugh. Yeah, okay, I won't be running. Tall. I won't be running after it. No, no, no. So, has anybody ever been uh, met an alien while they're taking the garbage out like I have to tonight? <laughs> <gasps> oh, I am sure that that has happened. Uh, I, I bet you it has. I mean, it's it's a it's a time because I I always put it off till like two in the morning. <laughs> I go wandering out there and two in the morning, my head's on a swivel, thinking about uh, Preston. <laughs> <laughs> about his stories. God, could you imagine seeing a 15 foot tall creature walking down your street? It's just, it's insane. But it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it, it doesn't at all, actually, because I would imagine that there's even been big, bigger beans seen. Isn't that, isn't that true, Preston? It's been beans bigger than 15 feet seen? Um, not a lot. Uh, there are a few scattered reports, but I'd say that 15 feet is right up there at the extreme end of the bell curve. Right. Uh, there was some case I read in Europe that I, that what there was like a number of these creatures by a road, and there were tons of witnesses that saw these big, 15 foot tall, spindly looking creatures and i'll know you know i don't know the details i don't know if you're if that's ringing any bells um but when you read something like that it's downright scary thinking things like that exist um, yeah i don't think people realize how often this sort of thing happens i remember very early on in my research i got in this in 1986 i read a report from j allen hynek who as you may know is basically the father of modern ufology, this astronomical consultant for Project Blue Book, and uh, author of a number of very well-received books. He said that one in 40 people have been taken on board a UFO. And I thought, no, 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 no way I know 40 people. That means yeah. I know people who have been taken on board. Mm -hmm. And it turned out I did. I didn't have to ask 40 people. I asked less than that, and I found five. Jeez. Uh, and that's just within my circle of family, friends, and coworkers. People yeah. I know, love, and trust. So that was a huge shock. And it was like a year later in 19, let's see, I think it was 1991, uh, that the Roper organization, the polling organization, did a poll and asked all these questions, looking for the markers of what we would look for to indicate if someone is an abductee. 
They found one mm-hmm. in fifty. So. That's yeah. That was that was it was crazy. There was one question. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but if you've seen a person in your room with a like a robe, a hooded robe, do you remember that question? Yeah, yeah. There's a number of questions that I always ask. Try to to try to determine if a person is an experiencer. And when did that when did that Roper poll come out? What year? Yeah, 1991. Many many years ago. Well, here's why. Because in the 70s, I woke up one time, and there was a man standing at the end of my bed, wearing a hooded robe with wide set eyes, just staring at me. It was one of the scariest memories. And then I remember reading the Roper poll many years later, probably in the 2000s, and I went. Holy crap, I saw you know what I mean. And I thought, what are the chances of that question being in there? And then me with that memory. Yeah, yeah, I feel for you. This is, this happens to a lot of witnesses when they find out that there's corroboration. It's generally speaking, people who are having UFO encounters shy away from researching this subject. They don't want to read Whitley Strieber's communion. You know, they're right. not attracted to UFO books. So for them to find out, like, oh my gosh, you're kidding. <laughs> this person saw, you know, they see pictures and they right. do a double back flip. Like, oh, how, how did you know what I, you know, what I saw? Yeah. Like, oh no, this is actually someone else's drawing. This is not your case. It's so weird. Um, but, I'll, you know, I think about that often, but that's the only weird memory I ever, ever had in my home where there was some person i know damn well i was awake as i got up and turned the light on so and then if it was a lucid dream why would i dream about a man with wide set eyes with a hood over his face standing at the edge, end of my bed staring at me you know what i mean uh, yeah. it's just too much of a coincidence to me no we know that this is not lucid dreams it's not sleep paralysis sleep paralysis does not leave scoop marks on your body or landing traces, or put implants in your leg, or you know, show itself to multiple witnesses. This is an absolutely physical, objective phenomena. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Man, it's, Doug, it's, that must have been crazy nuts. It was. I just woke up. This was like probably 1976, maybe. So you weren't very old, were you? No, I, but I had, a, I had my own home already. Okay, okay. And I was already married, believe it or not, and I had a kid, and, you know. Yeah. And um, I just remember just waking up, and I could see in the light, you know, the ambient light of the room, this guy just staring. And the only thing that I could think of, and this was before there was any talk of any gray aliens. I mean, there was just, there was nothing on that. Um and I remember him going, this guy looks like it's my cousin Eugene under the hood because my cousin Eugene had these wide set eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's, that's all I could remember. And then I just remember just, I quit looking at it and I leaped up and put the light on and there was nothing there. Wow. That's fascinating to me. Uh, people always remember the eyes. The eyes are sort of a big part of these experiences. Yep. Uh, so I got a question for you, Preston. If you're yeah. an investigator into the UFOs and you start poking around and you start turning over rocks, what's the odds they're going to come visit you? I mean, the investigators, Good. are they at risk? Yeah. Yeah, they sure are. I had no idea when I got involved in this field that I was running the risk. And I think this is true in any field of research. If you're out looking for bears, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you're going to be chased by a bear at some point. So I think it's somewhat akin to that, but really, no, it's more than that. Uh, Cause I started, I started having sightings. I thought, hmm, what is going on here? And I started researching and I found out that there are a lot of researchers who have the tables turned on them. You investigate sure. them, they are gonna investigate you. They're watchers, they're watching everything very closely, especially if it has to do with them. It's really interesting. Um, I just had a, a listener um, write who wanted to ask you a question and said that they've woken up with triangular dots, a half inch 
in diameter on both angles that itch really bad. Yes, the triangular marks. Yep. Um, I know about them. Huh. I wonder about this because, you know, the, I think the logical conclusion people would jump to is like, oh, well, they you know, did an implant, an operation, some, something mm -hmm. along these lines. I talked to a guy who worked for special forces in the army in 1994. He woke up in his home in Kankakee, Illinois. The graves were surrounding his bed. He never had an experience before or since. He is a twin. His twin brother has had experiences. So that might be the draw here. <laughs> Uh, but at any rate, Gray's like, come with us. You know, you need to come with us. Don't be afraid. He said he was very calm. Long story short, they pulled him on board, examined him, saw an instrument coming down, and that's all he really remembers, except waking up and finding a triangular mark on his arm. And uh, he went to the doctor, and the doctor was like, mm, well, I don't think it's psychosomatic. You know, you can either accept it and move on or obsess over it. This was a military doctor who seemed strangely... <laughs> accepting of this account. But my point is, I am thinking, and I'm purely speculating here, that they are doing this on purpose as sort of a calling card, like a, a tattoo, if you will, <laughs> to say, uh, you know, here, here's just a little message that we were here, just so yeah. you know, you're not imagining this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the calling card just basically to I mean, it's it's not meant to scare people. I mean, but why? But like this guy, he's saying they're itchy. So he wakes up. He's got all these triangular marks on both legs. So you know that's not a bug, you know, biting you. And yeah, not going to happen. Especially if they're triangular and you have them on both ankles. Um, but yeah. have, you, have you heard reports of itchy marks? Oh yeah, yeah. G generally. There's not a lot of physical pain or itchiness or anything like that, but that does happen. Uh, some people do report tenderness. Um, sometimes these things can heal over quite quickly. People have what looks like puncture wounds, but it heals up quite quick. And others have like an indentation that just stays there for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one lady I interviewed, she had a triangle mark on her hand and it would occasionally become inflamed the doctor freaked out. She tried to hide it from the doctor. She didn't want him to see it. But he grabbed her hand and looked at it and ended up looking at it under a black light because it would fluoresce under a black light. And that's another thing that sometimes happens to people who are taken on board. They have this fluorescent material on their bodies. Have you witnessed that before? Uh, I can't say I've personally seen it firsthand. But, uh, yeah, I have cases I've researched, and I know of many others in the literature. So how maybe long it's like it? a Well, I'm sorry, Joe. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, maybe it's some type of tagging system. Preston Dennett. Press, Preston, thank you so much. I know you guys were talking about markings and people that had the, the, the different things in their bodies after abduction. Preston, my question is, is... Is it real common for abductees, and, and maybe it isn't because we don't hear a ton about it, but to actually have things taken out of their body after their encounter? Um, I would not say it's real common. Um, in terms of like healing cases, that's where we would see it most often. For example, there was a guy in Texas. I did not interview him personally, but the ETs were examining him and said, what are these things in your uh, kidney here, these round objects and uh are they helpful to you and the witness said no his name is andrew said no th those are kidney stones and in fact they will hurt me if you leave them in there he said oh okay well we will take you again and take them out uh, apparently they weren't equipped at that time to take them out they took them again and uh, removed his kidney stones and it's interesting because they used this machine, this device, and the witness drew it. Uh, he remembered what it looked like and gave it to uh, the, the person he was working with. Constance Clear was her, her name. And she took that to a surgeon. He's like, oh, yeah, that's lithography. That's what we use to remove kidney stones. She's like, oh, well, that's exactly what the witness <laughs> said the ETs did to him. So apparently they're wow. using similar technology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
And it might be antiquated to them, like, eh, we'll use this really old thing that they you that they use on Earth. That I mean they might bypass us by now in technology. I mean, have they mentioned any of the abductees how they're like a quantum leap in technology, or are they not that far ahead, would you say? Oh, they're definitely farther ahead. Uh, they do use similar techniques uh, in terms of healing, but uh, I would say they're, gosh, thousands of years ahead of us, if not millions. Uh, and I would point to their use of the electromagnetic spectrum and light in particular. So they have beams of light which basically render solid objects invisible or permeable, can levitate a person, can paralyze a person, can heal a person, uh, can burn a person for that matter, uh, just do all kinds of things. And they have the ability to heal what we would term chronic disease. Uh, there was a lady cured of diphtheria. They put her in this sort of tube of blue light, boom, cured her. People cured of muscular dystrophy, diabetes, and of course their craft, the way they fly are far, far in advance of our own. We don't have anything that can sure. turn at right angles or dive into the water and come out of it. I've done a lot of USO research, unidentified submersible objects. And boy, they can go underwater and dart around underwater as fast as they can in the sky. So it's amazing. Have, <laughs> yeah, they must have force fields. I don't know. Do you think that those craft are, you know, when they come, do you think they're staying here for a long extended times and just hiding in our lakes and oceans and rivers? Um, yeah, I, I do. Um, and I cannot prove it. And this is somewhat a matter of speculation. Uh, but just having studied the whole USO phenomena, I'm pretty confident that our oceans, our lakes, and even our rivers have quite a few of these things in them. But not always, because it's not unusual when people see these objects or ETs, they'll, ETs will walk into their craft and this craft goes straight up. It's a tiny little star-like dot in the sky and it's gone. It looks like it's going into outer space. So maybe they have bases. Or I, I was going to tell you a story real quick. I had a, had a good friend I was working with in the TV business. He was a military guy. And I asked him, have you had any UFO encounters, you know, in your life? Um, he said, he got kind of, I mean, just turned white. I mean, he wouldn't tell me the story. Finally, I got the story out of him. He said that he was doing a lot of solo camping. He was doing um, uh, abandoned mine photography. And so he would go, you know, hike into these old mines and he was actually at one in Minnesota where there was this big pit. You know, it was an abandoned out in the woods. And he was walking away from it. He had taken all his photographs, was walking away. And all of a sudden, um, there was this giant splash, like where there was water five, six feet from this kind of a pit mine lake out on the shore and he sat there and watched a black sub you know like a, a standard flying saucer he said it was jet black slowly submerging into that lake wow was this in pennsylvania it sounds familiar to me no this was um, in minnesota this happened minnesota. In minnesota. Yep. all right um i did a study of these kinds of cases of not uso so much but mines not to be dramatic, but I'm obsessed with how much I just saved at Kohl's. I got 25% off Nike clothes for the kids, the cutest $39.99 flex hoodie for me, and got great Columbia gear for all our outdoor adventures. Did I mention the extra 20% off and the Kohl's cash I got? So yeah, not sure what I love more, fall deals or fall weather. Select styles, 20% offer ends October 3rd. Some exclusions apply. See store or kohls.com for details. It's clear to you that de-icing the wings will not be done in a jiffy. You look for phone outlets but see none. Only photos of phone outlets. A voice announces your gate is now 39C, 12B, 9A. It's like musical chairs if musical chairs made you sob in the pet relief area. 
A child picking his nose stares. His parents have abandoned him. The airport will raise him now. Don't let flight delays ruin your vacation. Go on a real vacation. Go RVing. And uh, they are so attracted to mines. Copper mines, iron mines. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you name it, gold mines, diamond mines, all of them. There seems to be a real draw there. And uh, yeah, even open pit mines. Well... Uh, Used up mines. Yeah, but for him to experience the thing actually landing in the water while he was walking away <laughs> and seeing this giant wave, you know, splash up on the shore surrounding it. I mean, there were details that he gave me that were just incredible. And to see that thing submerging, he said it was the last time he'd ever camped alone. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's pretty unusual for them to create a disturbance in the water. It does happen. Yep. Because often they'll just go into the water with nary a splash. But sometimes, yeah, they will come zooming out of the water and water is just pouring out. That happened at a reservoir here in Southern California. I think it's a, gosh, what's the name? Castaic? Yeah. Um, at any rate, yeah, this object comes right out of the water. That guy actually got a picture of it. He saw a humanoid looking through the window. Um, it's darting away and he grabs his camera and actually photographed it. You can barely see the window. You can't really see the humanoid looking through it. Uh, but it's an interesting photograph because there was another witness with him. He was a really credible witness, uh, very well educated. And of course, the Shag Harbor. I mean, you can't talk about USOs without mentioning that one. That was kind of like one of the first. Yeah, I mean, yeah, talk about a well-verified sighting. <laughs> Everyone who was there saw that thing going in. A lot of witnesses. In terms yeah. of USOs, probably one of the most active areas is the Santa Catalina Channel, San Pedro Channel. This is where, very close to at least, where this recent Tic Tac incident occurred. Mm. Uh, but there's some going on there. I have 150 cases documented of objects Hovering over the water, going in and out. They target boaters. It will come right up to your boat. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Don't don't you think there's going to be just a flood of more more military people coming forward that have witnessed these things on, you know, aircraft carriers and destroyers, and it just seems like the more that come forward, the more that are gonna come forward. Yeah, yeah, there's a snowball effect for sure. And I think also, I mean, this is a relatively, I don't, well, it's not a new phenomenon, but in terms of the modern age of UFOs, it was what, 1947? And that's when it yeah. really kicked up into high gear. And the whistleblowers are coming out of the woodwork. There are a lot of them. I was contacted by one guy, whose account is in my latest book, actually, I told you, I got to write about some whistleblowers. Yeah, yeah, you're saying. Um, really quickly, just kind of set the table. Is that because of the recent government activity of wanting the disclosure to happen? Did it have, or is this pre that these whistleblowers coming forward? Uh, yeah, I think it's pre that, and that's one of the driving forces behind disclosure. Because I don't think the government is doing it willingly. I don't think that this is something that they want to do. I don't think they're doing it for our own good. This is something that they're doing. For probably the main reason is to keep control of people's perception of this phenomenon. If they don't start disclosing, they are going to lose all credibility. They're going to lose the control of how people perceive UFOs. And that's exactly what's happening. I think that's why they were disclosing. And I'll put that in quotes because it wasn't really a disclosure. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I, I was disappointed. I was, wasn't expecting a lot. I was hoping for some real good footage. I was hoping for, mm -hmm. at the least, a piece of metal. Come on, you already said you have it. Uh, the Pentagon yeah. said flat out, we have material from otherworldly vehicles, and then backpedaled it, and out comes this report. Oh, we've been studying sightings. Here's 144 sightings. And gosh, yeah. one's a balloon. And we think some of these might be radar clutter. And there's no evidence at all. It's, eh, eh, they could barely use to say the word <laughs> extraterrestrial. You could tell it hurt them to say it. To their credit, they did say it. 
Uh, they've left yeah. that open. But there's a, also, eh, it could be Chinese. Could be Russian. No, it could be us. And I thought to myself, wait, 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 us? Aren't you, you? I mean, you don't know what yeah, you're right, doing? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that, so, that that was thoroughly disappointing. Uh, I was really hoping like you were. I was expecting for them to open up the doors of the store or anything and say this is the, here it is and here's everything. But maybe something, so, some little nugget of something that was going to blow everyone's doors off and not nothing nothing at all because you know i'm sure what they really want to do is they want to get in front of this crisis this could be crisis of ufos that's the only reason why they did it is so they get in front of it yeah yeah and it's not over yet this was just a preliminary report there's supposed to be another 70 page report coming lou elizondo who's part of all of this is putting out a book Um, this is explosive this is rolling out in I think a very controlled way. They're trying to control it. Yeah. Uh, but I think it is going to explode. And the, for me, the best thing that came out of all of this was a real wake up call to any skeptics out there. Because for the people within this field, the researchers and the experiencers, there wasn't really anything new there that we didn't already know. But for skeptics, boy, I went to work, you know, or I work at an office. And uh, they came running up to me like, oh, my gosh, did you hear, you know, UFOs? I'm like, I've been telling you this for years. Now you need, you need these lying government to tell you it's real. Uh. Yeah. <clears throat> do, do you think that there's alien races so advanced they don't have ships that they're coming to visit us? You know, they're like orbs, balls of light. Um, <clears throat> is that possible? Or, or are there, you know, I often wonder, are there micro ones? little tiny ufos that you know we don't see in our radar um do they have little drones that they're sending out that are microscopic i just wonder what you know if there's are there any weird things that you've heard through the grapevine or from witnesses on the completely um different types of alien encounters or ships or god i don't know I'm not even sure where I'm going with that question. (laughs) But but I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, not a nuts and bolts ship. um, Things that are maybe very... Has anybody encountered some little tiny UFO? nano-level UFOs. Nano-level stuff. Yeah, why not? I mean, we're working on nano stuff. Why don't they? Oh, they are. They are. And there are tiny little itty-bitty UFOs with itty-bitty little aliens coming out of them. That does happen. There was a series of cases in, oh gosh, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, somewhere somewhere around there, where they were landing outside of these schools, and kids were reporting these tiny little ETs, and the teachers thought they were nuts until the teachers started seeing them too. Mm-hmm. And there are a bunch of cases of little football-sized UFOs. One lady had this football thing come into her window, and a door opens, and out come these you know, four inch tall ETs. Really? Yeah. yeah, this does happen. And yes, there are people who see entities and there's never a craft. They never saw a craft. And this has led some researchers to think, you know, put the possibility out that these are interdimensional and not mm-hmm. necessarily extraterrestrial as we would think of it. Uh, I think we have to be really careful about that. The evidence, by and large, is very persuasive that we're dealing with extraterrestrials in the classic sense. Mm -hmm. Because these things are metallic craft, they are appearing on radar, they have portholes, they are burning the ground, depressing the soil, they are (laughs) being collected by the military, we have crash retrieval phenomena, and once that evidence actually comes out, I mean, all bets are off, we know at least some of these are extraterrestrial. But oh, yeah, yeah, some are undoubtedly there's an interdimensional aspect to all of this. Sure. It, it can sure. get very, this is such a weird phenomenon because there are all kinds of entities and people have a tendency yeah. to label this all under one umbrella. And I'm not so sure that's why. So there's a wide variety of stuff going on here. Can, can you give us more details, uh, Preston, on the Indonesia, <laughs> the little aliens and the what they saw yeah i mean the first 
uh, real case that got a lot of attention was this little boy who was missing. You know, everyone had been called in from the playground, and he, he could not be found. And they conducted a search for him, and they found him out in the brush, unconscious, and woke him up. And he uh, was very dazed. He was pretty upset. He pointed to a burn mark on his leg and said that a small, tiny little UFO had landed, and out stepped these tiny little creatures, and he ran up to them and tried to grab one of them, and it whipped out its little laser blaster and shot him on the leg and knocked him unconscious. And that started a whole series of these events. <laughs> wow. That's that's when I start punting. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. You know, kind of uh, circling back around to UFO abductees or in the abductees, are there any abductees that you're aware of that have had romantic relations with aliens that maybe father children maybe maybe they've been abducted and taken to the planet and lived on the planet i mean what have you ever heard of that where there's some maybe cross species uh relations going on yeah yeah i, sh- I sure have it's not super common because people will report genetic material being removed eggs and you know from men as well uh but there are some who say that this there are romantic <laughs> interactions, intimate uh, interactions with ETs. Uh, Greys, human looking. And one of the very first cases uh, was all about this. Uh, gosh, the name is escaping me. It'll come to me in a second. But it was the first reported abduction case. And uh, he said that this was in Brazil, I believe. And uh, he was taken on board and basically seduced by this humanoid female who wanted to have intimate relations with him. Uh, and that was the first case that got any publicity. And since then, yeah, that turns up regularly. There's a whole book out about this by Eve Lorgren called The Love Bite. And uh, yeah, it does happen. I think people also do report being taken to their planet. That's also pretty rare. Uh, some people are taken and not returned. I mean, we know of cases. I have investigated one myself in one of my previous books. That does happen. Man, that's crazy, though, because the reason why I bring it, bring it up is because we hear about alien children, alien-human hybrids, and, and things such as that, and it would speak to them, uh, at least at the very least, playing genetics with us, at least genetics with the species. And, and I, I didn't know if I, I know I did take a report years ago of one of our an email that came in talking about, you know, falling in love with an alien. And, and, and then a couple of them came in and then it, it's not something that's super common, but you're right. It does seem to happen. And I'm just kind of curious if you'd ever come across it, but it sounds like uh, it is a thing. Yeah, yeah, it does happen. This uh, lady that I'm interviewing right now had that experience with a male gray. And she said it was an absolutely benevolent interaction. Um, she's had more encounters than anyone I've ever spoken with, has a greater understanding really than anyone that I've ever researched. Most people who encounter are a little bit piecemeal, uh, but she is verifying everything in one huge <laughs> account. Uh, it's remarkable to hear her talk. I'm like, oh, yeah, I heard this from one person and this from another and this from another. And she's piecing it all together. And she calls them people. They are not alien to her. She says they're very, very much like us. And I agree. They're more alike us than different. But here's another question for you, Preston. This is actually coming from one of the listeners. Are aliens abducting aliens? Are there other other people encountering other aliens that have been abducted by the aliens on the ship? So is this happening (laughs) to other planets? (gasps) I don't have any cases personally or that I've even heard of to speak to that. I will say that uh, people have been taken on board and seen animals uh, that are not from Earth and are collected from other planets. Uh, But as far as, you know, aliens abducting aliens, no. I don't know that I have any cases like that. And how would we know? Uh, That would be pretty difficult to verify 
Uh, but we do have ETs, you know, Grays working along with Praying Mantis, working along with Nordic, working along with a wide variety of ETs. As near as I can tell, these guys are generally very spiritually advanced, very telepathic. They cooperate. They don't have governments like we do. They don't have wars mm -hmm. like we do. Uh, it's their society is very different than ours. Really quickly, what one more question from the listeners? I'm uh, coming in on my end is um, reptilians, good, bad, and different. Are they real? Are they there? Or is that something that is completely hype? Uh, yeah, the good, the bad, and the ugly reptilians. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, I personally don't get a whole lot of reports. I have gotten some, and the one I got was not super friendly. Uh, well, I've got a few reports, uh, and none of them were what I would call benevolent. But I know there are benevolent cases out there. Barbara Lamb, a pretty prominent researcher, talks about a few of them, and I've talked to some other witnesses who, you know, going back to intimate relations, had an intimate relationship with a reptilian. Often, these cases don't seem to involve UFOs. These are people who encounter these things out in the wilderness, perhaps, the Everglades, out in the mountains, swamps, what have you. So there's a lot of speculation that these guys are living in our planet. Yeah. Uh, that could be. Uh, some do see them on board UFOs, but not as often as not. So I'm going to say, yes, they're real. And some are good and some are bad. And talking about bad ETs. Yeah, the reptilians are the ones I would point to. One lady that I interviewed encountered them, and she had the distinct impression they wanted to eat her for lunch. Oh, boy. And, uh, yeah, she was just a young girl. She took off running as fast as she could. And, and then there's the stories of people claiming they've seen people kind of sort of that they are reptilian and then all of a sudden they're more kind of a skin suit and then they yeah, start changing yeah. right in front of them. Yeah. yeah. Our politicians makes me wonder <laughs> some, I don't know. I mean, there's all kinds of stories going on. We know the grays can put on screen memories. Yeah. And uh, I know one case where a lady was seduced by a very good looking, handsome man at a gas station. And she, she does not normally take, you know, young blonde muscular studs home and sleep with them but she did she felt compelled to and he transformed into a gray uh, they do wow. have yeah there is some truth to this uh, i don't know how well they can keep this up or how long uh, sure but yeah this wouldn't surprise me because it does turn up fairly i don't want to say often but consistently yeah yeah well, let's talk about your books, Preston. How can, can people get your books? What's the best route to go to to get those things? Oh, Amazon is probably your, your best bet. All my books are there on Amazon, but you know, other online retailers as well. I do have a website. If you just use a search engine on my name, it should take you there. It's prestondennett.weebly.com. You have excerpts of my books. You can also contact me uh, through my website if you have a story or you no know, comment or question. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I've got a new YouTube channel, I'm putting out a lot of my research there. Having a lot of fun with that. This is an important subject, guys. It's gonna change the world. People yeah. who might they might not believe in it, you know, you might be skeptic, but I got news for you. The day is coming when everyone is gonna know that this is real. I agree. I, I, I agree. We have not even scratched the surface of it. And I think the more and more is going to be coming out as we go on. I, I, hopefully sooner rather than later. You know, more. And, and hopefully the government will take it seriously and do a true disclosure. Or at least attempt to help a long disclosure in earnest. And be serious and forthright with it. Instead yeah. of just games of, you know, jokes. And, and, and it's, not, you know, it's not always a weather balloon. You know, it can't be. Always, oh. but they'd love to tell you it is. Oh, it's a weather balloon. Don't worry about it. Don't hold your breath. They've known. Yeah. They know, no, no. 100%. We know they know. They know we know they know. Um, yeah. Yeah. They're And they're not, I don't see any indication that they're going to be truthful, forthcoming, and transparent anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think probably what will happen is we'll have a CE5 event 
a group of citizens will call them down, or the UFOs are, will just appear on a mass scale. Yeah. Um, or another government, maybe Mexico, you know, Brazil, Chile, France, Canada. Yeah. I doubt it's going to be the U.S., but who knows? Yeah. You just never know, Preston, man. We are almost out of time. I want to thank you again for coming on the show. It's always so much having you on. I'm sure this is not your last appearance, though, because it is. We got so much more ground to cover, too. So it'd be good to have you back on. Hey, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys having me on. Like I said, thanks. Thanks, important. <laughs> very, very important stuff, Doug. Man, it is. Uh, wow, well, I can't believe it's right at the end of another show. It goes so quickly. It goes so quickly. It really does. So for myself, Joel Sturgis, and Mr. Doug Highcheck, we're signing off. We're at the end of another show, but until next time, guys, take care of each other, love each other, and keep looking to the stars, because who knows, maybe you're the one that has the, the encounter that blows the thing wide open. And if you have any questions, though, I forgot to add this, Preston, what's the best way to get a hold of you if they have a story or or if they've had an abduction that they want to talk about with you? Yeah, just go to my website, or you can email me. Uh, my email is PrestonUFO at gmail.com. Pretty easy to remember. Perfect. Perfect. All right, guys, we're out of here. I joke because I call this like my legging season, but I mean, it's, let's be honest, it is. I found this local company, Pruzy. It's like, it sounds P-R-O-O-Z-Y. And they have all of these amazing brands. So I got like some Reebok leggings. I found some Nike and Under Armour stuff, all kinds of stuff for me, Jake, the whole family. I just think everyone should live comfortably and also not spend a fortune. They're brands you've heard of, great deals. Plus, we're going to get you 20% off site-wide with KDWB. That's the code you use at Pruzy.com. Angie's list is now Angie, and caring for your home just got easier. Whether you need help with routine maintenance or a dream remodel, Angie makes it easy to see reviews, compare quotes, and connect with top local pros who can get the job done right. Plus, you can see upfront pricing and instantly book hundreds of projects. No phone tag, just the work you need done at a time that works for you. Angie's got your to-do list covered from start to finish. Book your next home project today at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com.